All right. Now we're in this video where we're going to talk about the process data. I know that a lot of kids were waiting on this section. Remember that in the process data, and this is a reminder, it has nothing to do with the raw data. The process data is where you get the raw data information and calculate it. So let's look at some of the examples here. So where do you start with the process data? The overview. Do you really need to have the overview? No, we don't. But it's always helpful for the IB examiners such as me that we go over the overview and say, oh, okay, I see why you're going to use this, uh, this calculation, why you're going to use that graph. Like, it's like you give an introduction about what the whole process data will be about. And that can get you some points because you're giving some explanations of the reasons why you're using those calculations. So why, what kind of calculations are you going to be using? Why are you choosing a certain graph? What is the point of that graph that you're using? And of course, what kind of statistical tools are you going to use? So these are three things that you mentioned in an overview. Overview should be like about four, maximum five sentences, which you're just explaining Hey, introduction, I'm going to be using average and I'm going to be using standard deviation. I'm going to use line graph because I want to see it according to time. That's it. You're just giving a small introduction to it. Then here is an example of an overview given by one of my students. And it shows you here that he is telling everything from whatever the experiments that he's going to do. Look, it says quantitative data will be first processed by subtracting the fine observance value to the initial observer values, making an average over the five trials of each temperature. So you see, he's just talking about the calculations he's gonna do. Then a bar chart will be created to illustrate the average of the of each of these dependent variables with a standard deviation to showcase that visually there's a significant correlation between the tables studied. He's just saying, again, what he's doing. It will allow for, for the creation of a trend line to model the correlation studied, to determine if the difference, difference in data are only caused by trial-specific uncertainty, Standard deviation we process and reflect upon to observe what extent values deviates from this. So I know it looks fancy, don't freak out, but you can go with simpler words. You just can say, we're going to take the raw data and do the average of the trials, put it together, and we're going to use this average to apply into the standard deviation question to find out if the variables are very, very scar or they're very close. Uh, we're also going to use the bar graph because we have distant, discrete groups or different groups and we're going to compare them. It can be simple words too. Don't need to get that fancy, but just mention which kind of calculations you're going to use as well as standard deviation or whatever specific rules you're going to use. So with that in mind, let's give examples of what comes after the overview. It is the calculations. You have to show the calculations. Do you have to do every single calculation? No. You have to give a little bit of a sample of what it looks like to calculate an average. A little bit of a sample of how to calculate the standard deviation and so forth. So if you look here an example, look what the student has written. To find the average data from all the trials of the particular substrate concentration. And he mentions the rest of it. Then what he does here, he actually puts the equation right here, all of it. And then he just says, what's here? Apply to all the other trials. Simple as that. Here's an example. So he took that, like you see right here, just going back here, he only put the equation. And then here, what did he do? He applied the equation. So he put some of the raw data information into the equation and found the answer. Now, it is extremely important that when you do this, that you put the unit. So if the kid came out with 300, 300 what? A lot of puts the number, but they forget to put the unit. So I don't know if this was, let's say grams, grams, then what do you put it? Plus 0 0.1 grams uncertainty. Students forget to put that. So when you're showing calculations, make sure you also putting the unit and uncertainty after you finalize the calculations, because that's also important. Here uh, is another thing that I'm going to explain to you is what are the steps to do this thing. So the first thing is show the equation itself. Like nothing, just plug it in there. Then by using words, describe why you're using this calculation. Then take one of your raw data and place it into the equation and show the results. And then, of course, after this, you have at least to choose one statistical value, like one type of equations that you're going to use. It can be standard deviation, standard errors, which usually goes with standard deviation, t-test, ANOVA, and so forth. So it can be any, okay? But as long as it follows towards your lab report. Now, a lot of students freak out and say, I can't do t-tests, or I don't know how to do ANOVA, or whatever. 
you can stay to standard deviation. You just have to show one type of statistical ex equation that you can apply to it. So find the one that you understand that you can actually explain. If you try to be fancy with something that you don't know how to explain, you will lose points. Don't waste your time making fancy statistical analysis if you're not good in explaining it. So usually I would tell students, if you're not good with math, stay to standard deviation and you still will get points. Don't think that if somebody who did ANOVA will get higher points than you. It's not. It's about you using the, some kind of right statistical tool that actually helps you analyze your data. That's the important thing. So here are some of the equations that you can use. Of course, you have the standard deviation, the standard error. You have the average percentage change. And you keep going with all the other formulas that is here. So this is what you do. It's up to you and your lab. What exactly? Well, the most common things here usually is the average should be there. The average and standard deviation, those two are very common found. So I would say get used to them. Now, here's an example of showing the paper. The kid put the formula. Then he explained a little bit what he's doing with the formula. Then he applied the formula. And he says calculating using whatever the calculator. You can do this. Or sometimes you can even say using the Excel sheet and then have the data in the Excel sheet. That's totally fine. Here is the average percent mass. He took the formula and then he explained a bit and then he applied the formula and put the calculations. You can do that. This is how it shows. So you have the overview. Then you have the calculation sections where you just put in all the calculations that you're doing with your equations applying this. After you do the calculations, every single one of them, there should be a table. If you go straight to graph, you lost points. You have to show all your process data in a table. So in this case here, you see there is a table. Again, there is a title. And then there is the independent and you have the average. So you have the independent all over again with, again, the uncertainty and the unit. And then look at the difference now. There is the word average. That shows that it's a process data. If you said number of oxygen bubbles, that probably would have been the raw data. But because it says the word average, now we know that this is process. And you have the numbers and you have the unit right here. Again, unit, uncertainty, titles, independent, dependent with numbers. All of this is important. Here is another example of a table that gives more values than just the average. First to here, you have the independent variable that always has to be there. So these are the five numbers. And look how you have all the significant numbers in there. Now, these parts right here have all been processed. So you do not put raw data in your process section. But of course, all these values that you have here, they came up because you use the raw data. So going back here, these are the average and you obviously have all the uncertainty average and you have the standard deviation. So he, he did everything from calculating the average to the statistical tools and he put them all in a table. Obviously, standard deviation has no units, so you don't see any units here, but the rest, you see that he actually exposed the uncertainties with the units for all his values. If you don't have the uncertainty units in your tables, it won't work. And you notice all again, the significant values right here are all the same, so it's all good. Remember that when you're doing process data, it's literally, once again, the calculations and the tables with the results of the calculations. On the next video, we're going to talk about the second part of the process data, which is the graph. How you have to do those graphs, what are the important parts that must, components that must be in that graph. So for now, we're ending with this one. But remember, watch the next video because it's all about the graphs and how to use those graphs. And with Nail IB, I guarantee you can get that seven. See you on the next video.